Hey guys, it's Apple Mint. Welcome back again to my channel. So if you guys have been with me for a while, you might remember that a few years ago I did a how to draw female bodies tutorial. And that was one of my most popular videos actually. It's got one of the most views on my channel, but it's a little bit on the outdated side in my opinion. I think I've improved my understanding of female anatomy a little bit more since that video. And so I wanted to make an updated video with some better, more updated advice on how to draw the female body as well as different specific body parts. So let's get right into it. So before we jump into drawing the full body as a whole, I'm going to break it down into segments and show you how to draw different body parts separately so that we can put it all together later and it's easier to understand. So the first thing that I'm going to show you how to draw are the hips and the legs. And this is actually my favorite thing to draw on a person. I just love the way it looks and it, I find it really fun to draw and to pose. So I'm going to start off by just blocking in a little waist area here and I'm going to break it down into some helpful guidelines. So when I'm drawing the hips area down to the crotch, it is pretty much like a triangular shape you can think of it as. Um, and this is basically your hip and it's connecting right where the thigh would connect to the hip and the crotch area. And an easy thing that you can do when you're drawing legs is to start with the thighs. An easy way to think about drawing the legs is to break it down into sections. So we have the thighs, the knees, and the calves, and then it connects down to the ankle and the feet. Breaking it down into these three different sections makes it a lot easier for us to think about how to go about drawing and posing the legs. Once you understand the concept of how to do this, posing is much easier. So an easy way to draw the thighs is to block in lightly. I say lightly because when you're sketching, you should always sketch lightly and then you can darken later. Uh, block in oval shapes, long oval shapes. And as you draw legs more and more, you'll realize the proportions of how they should be. Um, and you'll be able to feel it out based on what you think the height of the character you're drawing would be. Once you're done drawing those oval shapes, you can block in some circles, and this is where the kneecaps are. Knees have shading and shadows, so it's important to block these in and not just forget about them because it will really add a lot of definition and more realisticness to your legs that you're drawing. And then the same concept of what we did for the thighs, which is blocking in some long ovals, we do the same thing for the calf area and little circle joints to kind of remember where the ankles are and connect them straight to the feet. Um, and when you're sketching like this, it does not have to be anything that looks really that great. It can be really messy because you're gonna draw over it on top of this sketch. This is really just to block out where everything will be. So I'm gonna take a blue pencil here and I'm gonna go ahead and go over these lines and actually draw in the details. When drawing thighs, there are curves. It's not just a straight cylinder down. So around where the thighs meet the hip area, there's a curve inward. Then they curve a little bit outward toward the top of the thigh because that is the thickest part of the leg and it comes back inward, tapers down toward the kneecap. When you're drawing the knees, this person is just standing straight. So I have the knees bent a little bit inward. And so you see that little curve from the circle we drew before. On the opposite side of the curve of the kneecap, it curves inward rather than outward. So we follow that shape of the leg. It's almost like a really long S shape for the leg itself. Then just block in where the kneecaps actually are there with some lines. And the same thing for the calves, they go outward and then they go back inward toward the ankle. And the outward portion of where they curve is typically in the top third of the calf area. So you wanna make that curve up toward the top, not toward the middle of the calf, if that makes sense. And then just blocked in, I just blocked in the feet really, really simply, nothing fancy there. Um, and there you go, there is some basic straight on legs, nothing too fancy, but they're actually not that difficult once you break it down into different shapes and you think about where the different curves need to be. Next, I'm going to show you a really simple way to draw arms. And so I've prepared this little bit of a uh, side perspective of a person. So when drawing the arms, it follows a very similar type of thing. There's a lot of curves in the arms. So you have one where the shoulder is, 
Then it goes inward toward the elbow. And then just like the calf did, there's a curve going outward and then back inward toward the wrist. And arms will pretty much always follow this shape unless you are drawing a very muscular person or maybe somebody who's a little bit heavier set. The shape will change, uh, you know, depending on the kind of person that you're drawing and the kind of body shape that you're drawing. But for the most part, this is the way that the joints will flow, will bend. So as you see here, I'm going to sketch in a quick bent arm and you can see that little curve I did at the top for the shoulder, then curving downward. And then where the, the arm is bent, I put a curve there for where the elbow is and the actual arm itself, when it's bent, will have a thicker portion right at where the joint is bent. And then it goes all right back to the wrist. So I always feel like I'm really bad at explaining these things, but I hope that what I'm doing on screen is doing the explaining for me because I don't always know these technical terms. I'm not an expert in anatomy or just, sometimes I'm not the best at explaining these technical things. So like I said, I hope what I'm doing on screen is helpful for you. So we worked on the legs and we worked on the arms, but now I'm gonna show you a little tip on how to draw the chest and the waist area. And again, these shapes vary depending on the body type that you give your character, whether it be more muscular, a little more heavy set, or you know, whatever body shape you decide to pick. Um, these things might vary a little bit, but for the most part, this is the structure of the anatomy. So when you're drawing in the top area of the chest, something easy that you can do is almost make a wide W and connect it on the top. So something that's almost like a big square that's narrower toward the bottom and bigger toward the top, but it comes up like a little bit of a W in the middle. And that's to show where the chest and the rib cage lie. And under that, you can make a little bit of a rounded cylinder to show where it tapers in toward the waist because the waist is typically the thinnest part of the torso. And then it comes back out again for the hips. And typically when you're drawing uh, the female chest, Breasts are not perfect circles. They're not just giant watermelons. Uh, typically they are a teardrop shape. So please, if you're drawing just perfect circles for just natural breasts at rest, just don't do that please, because that's not how they look typically. Um, so I'm gonna just draw somebody in who has a average chest size and there wouldn't be any cleavage if I'm drawing somebody who has an average chest size because typically, you know, there's if she's not wearing any, unless she's wearing like a push-up bra or something, at rest, her boobs are not gonna be pressed up against each other. They all kind of fall off to the side a little bit. And again, the heaviest portion of the breast is toward the bottom of that curve. Uh, like I said, think of it as a teardrop shape rather than a circle. And of course, depending on the size of the breasts that you give the character, um, you know, this look might vary, but for the most part, that is the shape of the breasts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in some shoulders and her neck so that we have a little bit more of a more complete torso going on here. Not really gonna draw on any arms. I'm just gonna mark out where they are. But also always remember to add in a collarbone. And that is something that I do see some people forget to draw sometimes. And, and it's a bone that's pretty prominent on the neck area, neck, chest, whatever. I don't know what that area is called, but it kind of comes out from where the shoulders begin. Um, and it's in between that area where the neck and chest are and just kind of draw them to each side, leaving a space in the middle. That's pretty much how the collarbone lies. And adding that to, the, to your character will add a little bit more realisticness to the actual anatomy of the body. So now that I've broken down the body and I've showed you how to draw those separate sections, I'm gonna put it all together now and just do a sketch of a full body so that you can see how it looks all together. So I'm going to start off with that chest shape, that W, and I'm gonna add in a guideline for myself for the curve of the body. So that's something that you can do. It might make it easier for you when you're coming up with a pose and you want to maybe have the hips, you know, tilted a little bit to the side or something, or, you know, you're coming up with the curve of how the pose is. Drawing in this guideline might help you to make the rest of the body follow that curve. Um, but of course that's an optional thing. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
And after I draw in the chest and the waist area, I connect it to the hips with that triangular shape like I did before. And now I'm starting to sketch out the thighs. And as you'll see, I'm pretty much skipping that oval shape step um, because that's not something I typically draw in. I typically don't need to do that because I've done this so many times before. But if it helps you, this is the stage where you would draw in those ovals to mark out the thigh shape. And the female body typically has a lot more curves than the male body. In my last female body tutorial that I did three years ago, I got a lot of people calling me out for the fact that I said that, you know, most female bodies have curves. And when I said that, I wasn't trying to single other people out. Um, there are many different body shapes that women can have. And the tips that I'm showing you today are just a standard anatomy for a female body, but it will vary depending on the body type that you're drawing. Some women are more pear-shaped, meaning that they have bigger hips and smaller chests. Some people are an hourglass, which is pretty much what I'm doing here. I'm doing something between a mix of a pear shape and an hourglass for the body. Some people are a little bit more rectangular, so they're a little bit more straight and less curvy in the middle. It really depends on, you know, who you're drawing. Um, but for the most part, I do this to show you guys how to think about the different joints in the female body and the different muscles and where they connect because there will always be some kind of slight curve there um, at the different joints and the different muscles. So, you know, that's not me at all trying to say that this is the only type of, you know, way that a female body would be drawn. Um, but it's just a way to think about the anatomy and how everything connects. And of course, you can take it from there and do what you want with it. But yes, I'm not trying to offend anybody and I just wanted to put that out there, uh, you know, just so there was no misunderstanding. So now I'm going ahead and I'm drawing in an arm and typically the arms, the elbow will be about the area where the waist is and the hands will fall down to about the top of where the thighs are, the, the upper portion of the thighs. And that's kind of the proportions that the arms will typically fall at. Um, so yeah, that's always a good guideline and that's what I always do mentally is when I'm drawing the arm I always draw it in segments so that I can pose it better and understand it better um, But aside from just the segments I always make that first segment end right about where the waist is right about there roughly and that's always a very helpful thing to make sure uh, for me that I'm drawing somebody still in proportion even when I'm stylizing things I'm keeping their proportions so now I'm going ahead and I'm going to add in her breasts because in my original sketch there I did not add any detail in. So now I'm going in with my blue pencil and I'm adding that in. And I'm not drawing her with any kind of clothing on. This is just a body. So, um, you know, her, her breasts are at the resting state as I like to call it. They're, you know, they're not in a bra, they're not in an outfit. So they're not being pushed together or anything. They're just sitting. <laughs> Um, and now I'm going ahead and I'm outlining things a little bit more defined in my blue pencil so you can really see the curves of the legs and the hips and everything. Um, and so, yeah, don't, don't be afraid to add different curves um, and show different muscles because that's something that'll always make your drawing look a little bit more realistic even when it's stylized. It'll always have that extra touch of realism to it. So now that I've shown you how to draw the female body, I'm gonna draw another one. Um, and this time I'm gonna show you how to draw somebody who might be a little more heavy set. So we're gonna take the same concept of the different shapes that I blocked in for the other body because the anatomy is the same. So I'm just gonna quickly block out where everything will be with rough shapes. And then I'm gonna take my blue pencil and I'm gonna go in and actually add the detail of how the body looks. So the first thing that I always start off with is the chest area and I always work my way down when I'm sketching. So I'm gonna make her chest only slightly larger, um, but I plan on making more emphasis toward the bottom of the piece. So as I go here, I'm just going to add in some tiny details like the collarbone. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go straight to the waist area and I'm gonna make it a little bit more rounded rather than going inward more um, to make her look thinner. I'm gonna make her a little bit heavier. So I'm gonna add a little bit more volume to her. And curves are so fun to draw, honestly. I love the very soft look. Um, and so 
don't be afraid to make things curvy because curvy is beautiful. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm giving her a little bit thicker thighs. So I'm making her thighs touch together, but I'm also posing her legs together rather than apart like I did on the other uh, body that I drew. And as you can see, even though she's a little heavier, she follows pretty much a similar shape of where her joints are. You know, her hips dip inward a little bit uh, when they touch the thigh there and then they come back out because the thigh is the thickest part of the leg. And so, you know, don't be afraid to experiment with different body types. Once you know the basics of the anatomy structure, you can really go and turn it into anything you want. So there you have my simple little updated female body tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. Like I said, sometimes I feel like I'm not that great at explaining some things, but I always feel like my drawings do the explaining, so which is why I tried to go a little bit slower. So I really hope that this was helpful. I hope that it was more helpful than the last body tutorial that I did because I'm just kind of over that one being my most popular one. I'd rather have this one be the more updated version out there. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking to improve myself as well. Something I will say is using some different colored pencils is definitely helpful in doing different sketches like this. So anyway, as always, I have all of my links in the description box below. I have the link to my online store, the link to my enamel pin club, my Instagram, and my Discord server. So please check that all out below. And I thank all of you guys for watching this week's video, and I will see you all next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>